Good evening. My name is Shalia Ben. I am the Executive Director of the Native American Arts Center at Ida Wild Arts. Thank you for joining us this evening for the Michael Cabote Lecture Series. This summer, we had the opportunity to showcase lunchtime lectures. They were so much fun that we wanted to put them all together and share them with you online so we could enjoy them once again. This evening's lecture is with Stephen Paul Judd. Hope you enjoy. Before we get started, I wanted to introduce Wendy Weston, who's been curating all of the meals this uh, for our lunchtime lecture and doing the food taste testing. So I'll turn it over to her to share a few words about what inspired her to create this meal for us all. And then we'll turn it over to Emily, uh, who will introduce Stephen. Thank you. OK. Uh, my name is Wendy. Um, welcome, and we're glad to have you here. Today we have uh, salad with wild greens and jicama uh, with, a, with a lemon agave vinaigrette on it. We put cheese and pecans on the side for those of you who don't eat those foods. Um, we have a, a soup that is made with two types of beans, white chepri beans from the Sonoran Desert and pinto beans. And then we have... We're, we're honoring our people from Northern California today because you know that the Klamath River, the Klamath Dam is going to be removed beginning in August. And that will, it's the people there have been unable to fish in their traditional ways for over a hundred year years because of that dam and it's getting removed. <clears throat> so we're celebrating and honoring our people, our relatives in Northern California who will be able to exercise their their traditional fishing practices, and that will bring healing to their communities. So when you eat the salmon this afternoon, think of those people and send them good wishes for healing. Um, the salmon has a pecan, um, kind of like a glaze, and with gluten-free breadcrumbs on it, so you don't have to worry if you're gluten-free. And then we have a nice peach cobbler for dessert, so enjoy. I'm going to introduce Emily Clark, who is one of the senior program consultants for the Native American Art Festival Week, as well as Cheria Smith, who's also here with us today. She's another one of the consultants who I worked with throughout the year to formulate and develop the theme for this year, which is comedy, humor, and joy. And I'll turn it over to Emily now. Thank you. Hi, everyone. So as Shalia said, my name's Emily. I'm an enrolled member of the Kwea Band of Indians, and I am a consultant this year for Festival Week. And as you know, our theme this year is exploring humor, comedy, and joy in indigenous artistic expression. So today we'll be hearing from Kiowa and Choctaw artist, writer, and filmmaker Stephen Paul Judd. So I remember when I was writing this introduction, I was thinking about the first time that I ever got to see Stephen's work. And my dad's also an artist, so when I was younger, I would go with him a lot to help install shows. So we went to install this show, and we were the only two people in the museum. And I saw these little tiny pictures on one of the walls, and they looked very like, um, like old pictures of Native people, like vintage, black and white, small pictures on the wall. So I felt really drawn to them. I started walking over, and as I got closer and closer, I started noticing other things in the pictures. Um, there was Minions by a teepee. There were Star Wars characters, so there were pop culture characters um, imposed on those images. So when I think of Stephen's work, I think of joy and I think of fun, and that's why we wanted to invite him to speak to us today as we think about our theme for the week. Stephen is not only a visual artist, but also creates t-shirts, stickers, posters, and more. Additionally, he is a filmmaker, director, screenwriter, and fiction writer. He's a member of the Writers Guild of America and served as staff writer for Disney's XD comedy series, Zeke and Luther. His filmography provides a glimpse into the often underrepresented Native communities and strives to shed light onto Native issues. So we're really happy to have him here, and let's welcome Stephen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that introduction. And yeah, if you guys feel like you're getting hungry and you want to get up during this, it's not going to throw me at all. Please, I would um, prefer you to be eating and enjoying yourself during all of this because that's what it's all about. She said, my name is Stephen Paul Judd. I am Kiowa and Choctaw from the southern plains of Oklahoma. I was born in Oklahoma, but when I was about two years old, we moved to Mississippi, and I went to school on the reservation there, Pearl River. 
Choctaw Central. So I have a little animation I'd like to show you. I'm not sure how well we'll be able to see stuff here, but let's give it a shot. Okay. I'm going to turn off the volume. I think it'd be better if I narrated this rather than what we have narrating it. So, oh man, it's kind of hard to see, isn't it? Oh, well, we'll try. Can you guys see that a little bit? Okay, so that's me as a little baby. And then we moved from Oklahoma all the way to Mississippi, and we lived in the country. It was like 19 acres. We didn't really have cows, but I thought it would make the picture look better. <laughs> so my dad's dad, um, he was super religious, like really. Um, he thought the devil was in TV, and he, so he didn't want us to have TV. And my parents, um, they didn't really care. My mom was kind of hippie style. So she was like, they just didn't care, like TV, no TV. So because of that, I didn't know what television was. I'd never heard of TV. I didn't know there was that invention. But because I contracted polio, I had to go to the hospital to get a trans. Oh, that's him. Devil's in the TV. <laughs> oh. So I go to the hospital. I had to get a little work on my leg done for polio. And I'm sitting there, and in the hospital room, there's a TV. So I'm like, whoa, what is that? And the nurse is like, are you dumb? That's the TV. Everyone knows what that is. So they turned it on, and you guys know the movie Wizard of Oz? So that was the first thing I ever saw, and you know how that show starts off in black and white, and then it turns into color, the movie? So in the span of like 20 minutes, I learned about the invention of television, black and white TV, and then color TV. So I'm watching, I'm like, whoa, this is so crazy, you know, what is this witchery here, you know? So I'm watching it, and then all of a sudden, these uh, monkeys started flying, and I started crying, because then I thought, oh, maybe Grandpa was right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the devil's in TV. So I went home, and I told my brothers and sisters, Mom and Dad are holding out on us. There's this invention called TV. So we bugged my parents, let us get a TV, we want TV. And my parents, they didn't care. They were like, yeah, whatever, we'll get you a TV. But um, some of you may remember this, but there used to be a time where you could buy a television, but it'd only be black and white. It'd be like a black and white TV or a color TV. So it didn't matter if, there was, if it was a color show, you, your, your show would just be black and white. Oops. So we got a black and white TV, and there was this show called The Incredible Hulk that I liked. <laughs> ah. Don't make me angry. So my cousin came over, and he's like, hey, man, let's play the Incredible Hulk. And I'll get mad and turn green. And I was like, what? The Incredible Hulk turns green? I just thought he got really big. I didn't know he turned green. That was so crazy to me. So, But before we got a TV, our parents sat us down. They wanted to explain to us that these are actors. And so even as a little kid, right when I heard that they were green, all I could think of was, how do they do that? Is he? I wasn't smart enough to think about makeup, but I was thinking maybe they shine a light and put a gel on it, and he looks green. So I've always been interested in television, and um, I watched TV so much when I was a kid, and I kept thinking, man. But you know, I was going to school on a reservation. Um, you know, it's obviously all natives, but I noticed that there wasn't really any natives in the TV shows I was watching. Uh, the closest. There was these reruns that came on around 11 in the afternoon of a show called Chips. I don't know if you guys ever remember that show. So there was a guy on there, and Eric Estrada played a character named Ponch. And I was like, that guy kind of looks like my uncle. So if you would have told me then that I was looking for people that looked like me in media, popular culture, I would have thought that was just like psycho babble. That's crazy. I don't care. It's only after I got older and I started thinking about characters that I gravitated. I mean, I would watch problematic um, depictions of Native people just because I wanted to see Native people. I, I'm, if I was watching a movie, I was always rooting for the bad guy because they were usually brown-skinned, but I just like, oh, that kind of looks like me. That's who I'd play if I was in this show. So I thought, man, whenever I get old, I'm going to make stuff that I want to see that I wasn't seeing. So we'll flash forward to this real quick. So I'm going to show you a couple of films and a couple of stuff that I... Um, artworks that I've done, and they're kind of no particular order, so I'll probably jump around a lot. But uh, I went to school at a place called Haskell Indian Nations University. I don't know if you guys ever heard of that. It's a school in Lawrence, Kansas, all-native school. 
I didn't know what I wanted to do. I was just going. And then I got a scholarship to go to the Kansas University to be a speech pathologist. I didn't know what that was, but it was free school. So I show up. After a semester of that, I realized what it was. I was like, this is not for me. So I left KU. I went to work at a Sonic drive-in. Like, what am I going to do with my life? And, oh, that's a food place. I don't know if they have those here. It's like a little food drive-in place. And then I said, well, maybe I'll just go to school some more. So I called up the University of Oklahoma. Can I go to school there? Yeah, come on. So I drove down. And this was long ago when you could work and still go to school. So I paid for my own school. And I was going to school, didn't know what I wanted to do. And I heard about this thing called the ABC Disney Writers Fellowship. So I was like, oh, let me try that. I was working at a bingo hall at this point. And um, I wrote my little script, turned it in. And then I get a message. Can you move to Los Angeles? You've won this fellowship for your writing. I was like, oh, yeah, that sounds pretty good. So I moved to L.A. And two weeks later, I got a job writing on a TV show. So I text everyone, lose my number, losers. I'm in Hollywood, you know. (laughs) I didn't do that. But um, I was like, okay. So I'm in this writer's room for a Disney show, and it was so crazy. I don't know anything about writing. The only thing I'd ever been paid to write was the um, the menu at the snack bar in the at the bingo hall. So finally, they're like, hey, you can write this. So I wrote a screenplay. I wrote one of the episodes, and then the show ended, and I didn't know what to do. You know, I don't know anyone in L.A. I didn't have a manager or an agent, so I just hung around for about nine months with no job, and then I ran out of money, so I said, well, that was fun, let me go back to Oklahoma, so I did, and uh, I needed art for my, I didn't know what I was going to do, I had a little bit of money saved up, went home to Oklahoma, it's really inexpensive to live there, so I said, I need some art for my walls, and when I was in the second grade, I was in an art contest, paint your favorite book cover, and I won, but not, I mean, how good can you paint in the second grade, right? But my mom knew the teacher, so I think there might have been a little hook up there, you know? <laughs> so I think that's why I won. But that teacher said, you're a good artist. I was like, I am? So I believed her. So I started doodling all the time, writing. So I think if you tell someone they're good at something, they'll probably believe you, especially if they're younger, and they'll just kind of manifest themselves into doing that. So, so I needed art for my wall, and I wanted Native American pop art. I like pop art. And I was like, well, I won a contest. I could probably paint my own, you know? So I did, and I, for some reason, this was a long time ago, I was on Facebook at that time, and I, for some reason, I videotaped myself on Facebook painting it, and someone said, I'd like to buy that. I said, today I'm an artist. So I said, said, you want to buy this, man? I'll paint more. So I just kind of started painting, Um, wasn't really writing anymore, because I thought that was just kind of a, it was just a one-time thing. So two years passed, because we did two episodes, two seasons, and it finally came out. And I'm in this really horrible little apartment, and um, I'm by myself, and I'm eating spaghetti, and here comes the show I was on. It says written by, and I look around, no one's in there, and I thought there'd be a lot more fanfare, right? So I'm eating this, I'm like, why does the spaghetti taste so funny? And it was my tears, you know? Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm just kidding, I wouldn't cry. <laughs> but there was no fanfare, there was no fanfare going. I was like, man, that, that was crazy. I thought when I wrote my first show, it'd be like a big deal, but it was like no big deal at all. So then I get a phone call from the bingo hall, do you want to come back and work? And I said, yeah, man, I guess so. Three days a week sounds good, um, because then I could still do art. And I was kind of traveling, doing a little bit of art a couple of months. Then all of a sudden, three days turned to four days. Four days days turned to five days. Five days turned to six. Now I'm working six days a week, just working this bingo hall. We're making tips. So I feel like I could probably do this forever. But I didn't want to do that. I like to make stuff. So I figured out my bills for three months, and I wrote it all down. Cell phone, food, part. I said, okay. I'm going to quit work for three months. And if three months I can't pay for the fourth month, then I'll just go back to work and try to be the best employee I can be. How hard is it to be a good employee? So I quit working. And three months later, well, actually, I completely ran out of money, but I had checks coming in. So three months turned to four months, turned to six months. And finally, I saved up enough money to, to live for 10 months. And I never looked back after that. I just started making art. So I'd love to show you some of the stuff I make. And then the story will continue a little bit. This was a piece I did in downtown Los Angeles at a place called Indian Alley. I did this years and years and years ago. These are going to be in no order. Oh, I don't know if you know this, but there is a native on the $5 bill, silver certificate. It's really cool. You can look it up. So I did this with pen and Prisma colors. Uh, It's against the law, so I wouldn't advise you to do this. (laughs) 
Actually, I did that back when I really wasn't doing art, and I had to spend those to eat. So I went to eat with that money. Everyone was like, what is going on here? I was in Paris uh, showing a film that I directed called Ronnie Bodine. And I, I can't pronounce this. I think it's called the Arc de Triomphe or something like that. Forgive me if I said it wrong. But that's just a little Lego. This is forced perspective where you hold it and try to make it. And this looks like a pretty chill and easy to do. But actually, this, those of you who've been there know it's traffic going on both sides. So it's all the tourists lined up to get their turn. Everyone's yelling at me because I couldn't. What happened? I'm like, I can't get this. Quit yelling at me. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Um, oh, this is just a dresser I found on Craigslist, and then I just painted a picture and just put my own stuff on it. I just like to make things. What do we got here? Oh, so it's hard to see. Oh, this is, oh, it's really hard to see, but, man, I guess it's not. But you, anyway, so it looks like an Etch-a-Sketch, but that's actually a canvas, and I glued Mod Podge lids on the bottom, and I just drew the picture by hand, and it says Ledger Sketch on top. Oh, these are Rubik's Cubes. I turned them and made this uh, thing. So um, let me think about this. I knew I wanted to make this, but I didn't know I could turn the thing. So I just bought a bunch of Rubik's Cubes. And um, I had won this thing called the ABC. No, the, I, I won something called the USA Artist Fellowship. And with that money, I bought a bunch of Rubik's Cubes. I was like, man, this is awesome. I'd like to buy 2,000 Rubik's Cubes, please. <laughs> so... Um, at first, I thought I was going to put the stickers on them and make a picture, but then I realized I couldn't get the stickers to be straight. You know, like, it's hard to put a bunch of stickers on. So I just tried, and it turns out I can turn these pretty quick. So I just made this. Um, this is a chair that I found on Craigslist that I just painted on. Um, these are some shoes. I wanted, like, a pair of tennis shoes with, like, native imagery on it. So I just decided to... Um, I went to a comic book store called uh, Atomic Comic. And I walked in, this is in Oklahoma City, or Norman. I said, I'm looking for a comic book. He said, they're called graphic novels. And I was like, but, but the store is called Comic. I don't know what. So anyway, I said, I need some with natives. And he's like, we don't have any. I said, what about Lone Ranger? They did, it took me four comics, no, maybe more, four comics just to get this enough images. And I thought comic books were like 99 cents, but they're like four bucks, so. And then I glued them on here. Anyone can do this, but I wore them one time and they fell apart, so. Oh, this is, um, oh, the powwows you will go. Um, oh, this, I, I'm surprising myself that I didn't know what all I put in here. These were, um, what are they called, paper dolls? Yeah, so it's hard to see, but that's a medicine man. That's a chief executive officer. That's a chief, and there's a scout and a warrior. So it was just, I just wanted to make these little paper dolls. They're actually pretty big. They're like this big. Oh, this was like something I probably did like eight years ago. I was watching the news and there was something called the nun bun. Does anyone remember the nun bun? It was a cinnamon bun that looked like Mother Teresa. Look it up. This, and then I see people seeing Elvis in a tortilla. And I was like, how come no one's seeing native people in their food? Like, so I said, I'm going to do this, the toast of Indian country. So I got these toast and... Um, so I burnt some toast, right, and I started scraping it. I said, this got to be an easier way. So I got some paint. And then um, I had one toaster. So I, I would toast two at a time. And I made a stack like this, and then they all curled up like, oh, so i got to start all over. And I had to put books on them to keep them flat. And then I put them on a canvas, and I glued them. But then toast shrinks, shrinks at night. So, now I had, so I had to redo it for the third time, and finally I was able to do this simple technique called a grid technique. Everyone Everyone in here can paint this picture. Painting with a grid technique is something anyone can do. It's something that I teach. It's super simple. Um, this is just a rug um, that I did. If you look closely, I don't know if y'all can see my, there's the, the Space Invaders. There's a ship, like Columbus's ship in here. <laughs> Let's see what else we got. Oh, these are just some of the, like she was talking about Photoshop stuff. They're a little hard to see. Um, I, they're, everything you're looking at here, amp it up about 10% and it looks that much better. Oh, these were some shoes I made. Okay, okay. Does anyone know who the guy on the right is? <laughs> That's right. Anyone know who the guy on the left is? <laughs> Billy Mills. Yeah, yeah. So these guys are Olympians. Jim Thorpe was, uh, he was the first president of the NFL. Um, they both went to Haskell. I went to Haskell. They have a gold medal. I got perfect attendance in the second grade. <laughs> Onward, Haskell. 
Uh, that was just, I wanted to make a Lego of him, so I kind of like piecemealed stuff together. But this was really small, so I couldn't cut the C out just right. That's why it looks a little weird. But I just like painted it by hand, and I think I used like a soccer thing and just kind of was able to make a little Jim Thorpe Lego. Um, that's Jim Thorpe out of um, Rubik's Cubes. This is a Billy Mills Lego I made. Oh, so this is the Unbroken Treaty action figure. And you can see there's nothing in there. <laughs> the guy says, freedom of religion. And the, the little pilgrim man says, of course, but there's an asterisk. And if you look on the bottom, it says terms and conditions may apply. <laughs> These are just some more um, photoshops, that stuff that I do. Oh, this is kind of neat. These are dice, like dice that you roll. Whoa, crazy. This is a... <laughs> this guy's crazy. I know, I'm crazy, I'm crazy. Oh, this is IHS operation. <laughs> he does not look happy. These were just um, some, uh, a painting I did, uh, just to uh, put some moccasins on this guy. Oh, here's another one. This is Dice also. I think it kind of looks like a photo. It's so crazy what these dice can do. That's like 20,000 dice. It's so heavy. It is, uh, it's probably 800 pounds. It's crazy heavy. I don't know if this is Photoshop or a real photo, but I made it. <laughs> Just more Photoshop stuff I love doing, stuff that I love. Um, I made some Legos of the um, reservation dogs. Oh, so this is a, a movie I'm doing right now um, for George R. R. Martin. He, he wrote the Game of Thrones books, but I directed and wrote a, it's post, he's producing this thing that I, that I adapted from him. It's a post-apocalyptic, but with Native Americans. It's kind of the vibe of it. Oh, so this is how we shot it all green screen, right? Blue screen. But then this is how the film, uh, I can't really, it looks really awesome on here, though. <laughs> oh, here's a, okay. So, um, some of you guys know what par flesh is, some of you, maybe? So, it's like this really... Um, so it's like rawhide, and then you can make these like suitcases out of them. I, I don't know, um, carry. Anyway, a lot of planes tried to use them. So um, I was like, oh, you know, I'd like to make one for my backpack, right? Like a modern par flesh for my uh, laptop to fit in. So I didn't know how to do it. So I did. I, I learned in that old way, that traditional way, and I got on YouTube, and someone taught me that. <laughs> and uh, so I got this hide, right? And I threw it in my bathtub, and it is... It, if you've ever done this, when hide gets wet, it's like skin. It's so slimy and gross. I was like, oh, my gosh. This... So I sewed it up, and um, I was on the back. The reason I show the back first, because it's the best part, because that's when I was taking my time with the stitching. And then your hands get so tired. By the time I got to the front, I just like, it's not quite as good. But I just made a backpack out of it. And um, let me see. I think I got the front part here. Oh, wait. wait there, here it is, right? There it is. So, yeah. So it's... Uh, the Lone Ranger and Tonto. But as you can see on the side, it's just single stitching because I got tired of doing all the stitching because I, want, I wanted to do it in one day. So then this is just more stuff I make. It looks like that's like, um, it's like King Kong, but I put a buffalo on, not King Kong, but a Donkey Kong, right? So I put the um, buffalo and he's shooting these flaming arrows at this guy coming up. Oh, here's a shirt um, I designed. Uh, I can't really see it. This is Good Medicine Surf, and it's just got some stuff from my tribe, but it's a capsule that I, that I make. Oh, so I'm not good at guitars, but I have a bunch of guitars because I'll play one and I can't learn. I think it's the guitar's fault, so I'll buy another guitar thinking maybe this is... The... <laughs> so I'm not good at all, but I have an um, amplifier, and I had this, I think it was a pinto bean bag. I, um, someone may, can tell me what that... Burlap, I think it's called. And it had my tribe on it, so I just cut it and glued it and put it on this uh, and made my own amplifier. Oh, so because I have polio, I can't really walk in moccasins, so I took some shoes, um, shoe soles, and stitched them into the moccasins themselves. 
So that's what these are. These are just straight from basketball shoes. Uh, oh, we already saw it. It's a rerun. I think this picture's outside this library, actually. I saw it when I walked in. King Columbus. Ewoks. Oh, there's something I want, I want to show that I wasn't think, didn't think I was going to show, but let me show you this one last thing. Let's see. Um, Stephen, Paul, Judd, Instagram. I think that's me. Because I know uh, Sierra's mom's here, right? Sierra contacted me, and I did this for her show. Yeah, it was for the premiere of the second season. So, yeah, that's fun. Oh, I want to show you, since I got this open, I'll show you something else that I, um, that's kind of fun. Uh, so I, I wanted to make these things out of, uh, there's an old motel sign. Oh, look at this. Bluebird. <laughs> oh, this is an action figure that I made for a book that I co-wrote called The Res Detectives. That's the little res detective. That, that dog's name is Billy Jack. Okay, we're getting there. Oh, here's some neon signs I made. Neon headdress. I had a dream about neon headdress, so I had to make it. One second. We're getting there. We're getting there. We're getting there. Don't worry. Hold tight. Hold tight. Oh, this is kind of neat. I'm also chalked. Also, I took this beadwork medallion, right? That's, uh, that's at the Choctaw headquarters, I believe. That was kind of... Oh, I did this painting for the U.S. Open. Oh, they're, that there on the far right. They auctioned off the, the tennis thing last year. Oh, I made this as... Um, if you guys watch Reservation Dogs, I made a Dallas Gold Tooth uh, action figure. <laughs> I don't know. Actually, let me just get to the end of it. It's probably better. Uh, let's see, where'd I put it? Oh, there it is. <laughs> Young warrior. I really like action figures. Oh, um, I think Tatanka Means is going to be here, right? I did this project with him. That's him right there. Action. It was just part of a, that's kind of a behind the scenes of a thing we did. I'm looking for something specific here. Give me one second. It's kind of not really worth it, but I'm still going to keep on scrolling to it. I like doing stop motion. I made this with just clay. Go, little buffalo, go. <laughs> oh, so this is kind of neat to me, at least. Okay, so I have found this old TV, and I was like, oh, I'd like to make something with cardboard inside this TV, but I wanted to use no electricity, right? Just all levers and stuff. So what I did was, if you look, it's just duct tape and dial rods, and then it's just me in the back, pulling these levers back and forth. <laughs> What's up, everybody? <laughs> no electricity needed. And it was a pretty fun or simple kind of to make. I just like, I cut myself during this. I think it stopped because I accidentally, because I was just kind of drawing it as I went and cutting it out. Super simple. Like if you look too close at any of these, they don't really hold up to the eye. But from far away, if you squint your eyes, they look pretty cool. So this was like, so I drew it first right here. Like, oh, that's, I knew what pieces I needed. I just kind of, figured out what pieces I would need to make this. So I just like to make stuff. Um, yes. Yeah, oh, I did this too. I made this, uh, what are these things? View, view masters. And I took all my little images that I make and made my own view master. Yeah, that was, that was pretty fun. I also made a magic eight ball that might be on here somewhere too. Oh, I designed a shoe box for Nike once. Um, let's see. It's hard to see, but it's like woodcut, and there's like city streets under. You can't see it, but there's a city under behind there. And on this side, there's like teepees and some um, other things on this side. And it's glass, and they they put my name in the glass and made this special shoe. It was crazy. What in the heck? 
I still have that if anyone wants to buy it. <laughs> we'll, we'll, save, we'll save it for hard, hard, hard times. Um, oh, I made my own uh, keychains also. War pony. So during COVID, my parents came to visit, and they were staying in the van, and I was on the sidewalk. This is at the, at the height of it, you know, and I don't want to, you know, they're older, and my dad, um, he has, he's on oxygen. And, uh, all right, we're going to leave. All right, see you later. And he takes the oxygen off, gets out, and he lights up a cigarette, right, outside. I was like, what just happened? You just... I said, oh, my gosh. I said, your oxygen tank, you should be sponsored by Marlboro. You know, this is so crazy. I said, can I paint on your oxygen tank? And he said, no, I don't. It's like it belongs to the VA because he's, he's a Vietnam vet. So I got on eBay and I found an oxygen tank and I made this. So it's a, <laughs> it says, don't worry about your lungs. Trade in 3,000 Marlboro miles for your own oxygen tank. <laughs> You get five miles for, the, for, that, for that tank. <laughs> uh, let's see what else we have. Oh, this is kind of neat. Um, well, I'll, I'll show you. Oh, this is, um, they ha- I had this, um, they do the land run. So I made, this is our treaty for the Kiowa Treaty, Tree Medicine Lodge. So I put it like it went through a uh, paper shredder. Yeah, I wore that to this little protesty thing we had downtown. Um, let me see if I can find one more cool thing to show you cats. This is just something fun. I just grabbed this book, um, a Dr. Dr. Seuss book. And then it was pretty simple, just a fun, it's all just crafty stuff, you know, but I just spray painted it myself. I I should probably speed this video up so it's not. Go, go, go. And then, oh, I have to practice drawing first because I'm scared to try to, and I just drew on it. Then I, oh, that's me drawing on it because I couldn't really erase it once I started. So then I, because I want to put paint on it, I had to paint everything white first so that the other colors would pop out. But basically I was recreating the book, but I added these, uh, like these braids on them and I'm about to put some beadwork on his hat. I think that's what I'm about to do next. Um, let's see, I might have a picture of it here. Um, oh, there it is. Yeah, there he is. Oh, here, this is awesome. This is the great thing for you, the people that like to make art. It was supposed to say fry bread and spam, but I, like a dummy, I wrote the words green eggs. I was like, oh, what? So then I had to pretend like I put a Band-Aid on it, but that wasn't how it was supposed to be. It was just me realizing, oh, you're so dumb. What is so, so that's just a, I just wanted to make the real book so people could have a, a solid book of it. So that's what that is. Um, let's see, last thing, last thing. What can we do for the last one? Oh, this is just a big, uh, Fry bread, fry bread spray. It's huge. It's the size of a chair. Let's see. One last thing. Oh, this is kind of neat. Break glass in case of emergency. <laughs> okay, last but okay, we got about okay. Is it what about ten minutes? What do we got here? Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Okay. Uh, let's look at. Uh, I'm going to show you a quick short film for the last. Uh, so I. Okay, I'll just show you one short film because one minute long. In case there's any questions. So when I came back from L.A. And I was like, man, I still like movies. I want to make my own. So I made this movie for, I think it cost me $20. And I used a camera. This is before, this is like when everyone was using digital cameras, not your cell phone, right? It was like, chick, chick, chick. so I took a bunch of pictures and I made this. And then someone from the Smithsonian, I think they bought it. And then I was like, I'm a filmmaker today. So it was kind of the same thing. So let me show, show you that. Give me, okay, here we go. This is really quick. I'll just read it to you. 1969, NASA sent the first manned mission to the moon. The following classified footage has never been seen by the public, dot, 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 until now. Okay, so, and, and then to catch up what's going on, I was just living at home, doing pretty good, making a living as doing art. And um, about right before COVID happened, I, I'm trying to tell the story super fast, but the long story short, I picked up a hitchhiker at 2.15 in the morning. I thought he was going to kill me. He didn't. He didn't. Just spoiler. He didn't kill me. <laughs> spoiler. He didn't. He didn't kill me. 
But I thought I was going to die that night, and I could not st stop thinking about this guy, and I turned it into a screenplay. Just living in Oklahoma, just doing my art, happy to live without um, having a, um, you know, I, wasn't, I didn't have to clock in anywhere, so I felt like even if the guy killed me that night, I was like, you know, you've done pretty good. You've traveled, and you don't have to wake up at any time. Would you trade this off? And I'm like, yeah, I'd probably do it again. He didn't kill me, wrote the screenplay. I was going to shoot it. COVID happened. Weird coincidence, this producer's like, hey, what happened to that film you said you are going to shoot? I said, yeah, I'm not going to do it. He gives it to an agent. Um, I go, they like it. I have a meeting at Bad Robot. I sell a script to Stephen King. Then I got hired to write on a Marvel show that's coming out November 30th. It's called Echo. I co-wrote the pilot in episode six. You don't have to watch it, but if you would stream it, that would be awesome. Just let it play in the background. I don't care if you watch it. I want... I won't ask you anything about it. I, just, just let it play. Um, and then season two, not season one, so don't even have to watch that. But I got hired as a co-producer and to write on a show called Dark Wind season two. Not season one, season two. It's coming out at the end of this month. It's episode three. You don't have to watch it. I'll never say, hey, what happened? Nope. <laughs> just stream it. And then when it gets done, stream it again. Um, so that's coming out this year. So, um, okay, so I think we got like about six minutes. So is there any questions? Oh, last thing. I brought some stickers of some of the stuff I make. This is a Charlie Brown. It says, I wish we were taught real Native American history in school. And just some cool stickers. There's enough for everyone. I got a red bone poster that I made. And just all kinds. You guys can pick through here. But there's enough for everyone for sure. And, you know, if you're a student here or whatever, grab a couple. Or if you're a young kid, you're welcome to grab more than one. But there, there's enough here. Um, one's yellow, and it says, um, they actually use this on reservation dogs. It's something I made years ago. I was on, I, 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 I put this picture up that I made. It says, does America, I was watching, it was there in the presidential election at one time, and they were like talking about, we cannot trust these treaties in the Middle East. And I was like, what? what? And they were saying it with no irony. So I said, does American exceptionalism include honoring the treaties? Because that's what we're talking about, American exceptionalism. And this guy's like, if you hate America so much, why don't you move? So I made this. It said, I loved America before it was called America. So you guys are welcome to come grab these afterwards. Oh, that would be here. Some cool stuff there. So um, anyway, any questions? Like we got like five minutes. Don't be shy. Yes. Yeah, well, yeah, because it's the opposite, because I didn't go to school for art, so maybe it is true. I just went to school. I, I'm not a good student. I went nine years trying to get a bachelor's. <laughs> um, I graduated from high school with an associate's. Then I left KU, and then went to OU to, step, uh, to major in communications. And if you major in communications, that just means you want to keep going to school for something else. And then I paid this girl, she's a Cherokee girl, to do my capstone for me, right? I'm paying her, paying her at the end of the year. She never turned it in. So I didn't graduate. So, so I, nine years of school is just because, you know, I was, I was kind of like a mellow dude. So I just always looked like I fit in there. So I just kept, no one thought I was old, too old to be in school, you know? And I wasn't setting no curves. No one was worried about me setting any curves. So, um, so when school ended, I didn't know what I was going to do. I was just like, well, let me just uh, go work at the bingo hall. So I've been super, but I'm, I, mean, I am blessed and fortunate just to be able to make things. So I, but, but, but it's, it's not one thing. So I do graphic design. I have a t-shirt company, like she mentioned. So I'm like that lady at the casino playing three machines, you know? One of these is going to hit. <laughs> I can write something this month. Oh, someone wants a t-shirt. Oh, I, I can design a logo. So that's kind of how I am. But, but, but I love all these things I do. I would, I would do it for free. Don't tell the people that pay me, but I love doing it. So I just get to make stuff. Anyone? Yes. Yeah, so like I love a lot of your stuff, like as new t-shirts and everything like that, like, especially like your Star Wars series and all of that. Um, so is there any issues regarding like copyright infringement or anything by using their imagery? Turn off the video camera. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, the way I look at it, who, I don't know. You can't get a water out of a stone is what I was thinking when I first started, right? I was like, I'm just going to make these, man. I hope they say something, you know? I got something to say. So then uh, this TV show was getting filmed, and they were like, hey, we'd like to use um, your, one of your Marvel things, right? I was like, oh, cool. And then they're like, yeah, we sent it into Marvel to get proof. Wait, we, you did what? <laughs> What's going on? And the, the Star Wars, too, they sent that into Disney. And I'm like, there goes the gravy train, you know? <laughs> I kinda, but, but then they come out, yeah, it's been approved. I was like, oh, my goodness. So I took that as a green light, and that's what I want to say when I go to the courts. But... Um, 
people would take pictures in my shirt standing next to Stan Lee at Comic-Con. I was like, no, don't show Stan Lee this stuff. So to answer your question, you know, there's, I, I actually did look into it and there's this, who knows, but what I did look at, and I did actually contact a lawyer on it, if you're using satire or an image to teach something other than what it was originally meant for, which I hope is that what I'm doing, you can do it. So don't take any legal advice from me though. So <laughs> in, any, any other questions? Yes. Your hand tap too. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Is that something traditional or? Yeah, so <laughs> this is funny. So. Um, I didn't have tattoos on my hands or my neck or anything, right? I had a few that you couldn't see because I thought, man, I might need to get a job one day. So I'm in Seattle and I, I'm having an art show at this gallery with some, a couple of other artists. And one of them was a traditional guy from up in Alaska, right? He did the hand poke, right? And he's like, yeah, my art is tattooing. He said, can I tattoo something on your, your hand, your hand, your wrist? I said, maybe like something like a little something here. He's like, yeah. So I get up there and he takes a pen and he starts drawing these lines down my hand. I'm like, why is he doing that? <laughs> So I thought, well, maybe it's guidelines for my wrist. He's got to make sure. Next thing you know, doop, doop, doop. I said, I guess, I guess I'm getting a tattoo on my hand today. So at that point, I was like, I guess I just go ahead and do the rest. So um, this says 1778. I hear a lot of Native people say, man, the government doesn't honor our treaties. If I was a non-Native person, I'd be like, oh, really? What treaty did they break that affected you? And treaties are crazy and they're hard. And you'd be like, uh, uh. so I thought like that. I'm just a bill song, I'm just a bill. I'm like, if I could just teach everyone one treaty. So how about 1778, Treaty of Fort Pitt, first treaty ever did, it was broken in the first year. The tribe comes to the government, Continental Congress, hey, we got some, um, something going on with this treaty. And they're like, well, we don't care. So first treaty was broken. So I was like, if everyone could just at least remember one treaty, 77, that's why I put that on my knuckles. That's why people hate sitting next to me on a plane because they ask about, oh, let me tell you, <laughs> let me tell you what that date is. <laughs> This is 1903, that was um, Lone Wolf v. Hitchcock, that's the year my tribe, the Kiowa tribe, took the government, the United States government, all the way to the Supreme Court for stealing our land. So here, here, here's, it's very black and white. Sometimes these are tricky, right? You'll hear people say, well, we signed the treaties, but that wasn't really our name. Those are kind of hard to prove that they didn't sign it. What happened with the Kiowas, in order to change our treaty, you needed three-fourths of the signatures. They did it, they turned it in. But luckily for us, there was a census, so it was a mathematical problem. They missed it by eight people. They did their math wrong. So we're like, hey, even if we, even if we can see that these signatures are real, mathematically it's not enough. We go all the way to Supreme Court. The Supreme Court said, oh, man, that's right. Okay, plenary action, which means the United States government can change a treaty anytime they want to. So they move the goalpost. So it's a very black and white broke. So that's what that is. And here it just says honor the treaties. And um, this is a logo for my company. And this just says rents due. It's something that I put on this old picture of it. But I played blackjack too. And this guy thought it was called the rents due. He said, I like that. The rents due. I, mean, I was like, no, it has nothing to do with this blackjack table. So that's what that was. I. And any other, any other questions? Yes. Uh, you mentioned you were a member of the Writers Guild. And I'm wondering, uh, due to the strike, how are you coping? Yeah, they were protesting out here because I was speaking here. Now, now, I'm in the Writers Guild, and the uh, uh, DJ actually, um, since I knew I was coming here, I came out early, and I, I did a couple of uh, walks out there. But I was throwing my treatments over the wall, hoping they'll read it. <laughs> come, come find me. No, no. for me, it, it's been good because I'm on a show that's going to come back. So I know I have a job, but also I'm very fortunate to be able to do art. And uh, so it's, it's actually helped me because I'm, I'm trying to catch up with commissions and stuff like that. So... But it's hard for other people. I mean, I feel for other people, not just the writers, but the crew people that, that aren't able to work. And oh my gosh, I, I, I'm very blessed, but I couldn't imagine if I had a family and I'm not a writer and these things are getting shut down. So hopefully um, uh, cooler heads will prevail and this ends really quick, I hope. Yeah. Yes. Do you have any uh, um, like goals that you want? Yes, I would like to direct a movie. That's, that's like my big goal. That's what I really want to do. I just got lucky that I'm kind of able to write. Oh, I wrote a Marvel comic book. That was kind of cool, too. I did that, I think, last year. They contacted me. You want to write a comic? And I was like, yes, I would. So to be able to have a comic book in the, all across America was kind of cool. But yeah, I'd like to direct a movie. Yes. Um, are there people that you recall from your childhood that helped inspire you to besides Poncherello? Yeah, um, my, 
my mom's and her sisters and brothers were very artistic growing up. They were really good at art, um, doing magic tricks, just all kinds of creative things, building. My mom would build puppets for us growing up. So, you know, all these people, they're way, way better than I am as far as their, their techniques and stuff. You know, I'm just, I'm just really holding on to their coattails, emulating them. But yeah, definitely my, it was my aunts and uncles that were always making stuff for us. Anybody? Yes. Uh, with all the work that you're doing, um, is are you are you giving back to your community anywhere? Do you plan to? Do you have any? Yeah, yeah. We um. Well, just for our clothing company, also we we constantly do um, charitable things. You know, like we. So yeah, I const like as much as I can. I you know, and also I speak, and it's on a sliding scale. So what that means is, let's say you're a group that wants to bring me in to speak or something. It's always a sliding scale, whatever that person, there's no number that's gonna to be too low because I was younger and I would hate to know someone that I wanted to see wouldn't come see me because they wouldn't pay them enough. That's just heartbreaking to me, you know? So I'll speak anywhere because some tribes are balling out of control and they pay me way too much. And then some people, they just don't have any, but it all balances out. I've been very fortunate. So that's the main thing that I do is just trying to do that. But we also um, contribute for our NTVS. We also, we try to contribute every other month to find a different place to contribute to. Charity wise, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us this evening. We hope you enjoyed the lecture and learned a few things and had a few laughs along the way. Be sure to visit our website for future online lecture series. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>